Amen. We thank God. Everything we have been talking about today, they are almost like the same thing. Light of the world. Uh, yeah, not of the world. So many things like that. They are not of the world. So, I really thank God for how He's doing it. And this one we are here today is saying unfruitful works of darkness. You understand? So, they are still all saying the same thing. So, it's just like hearing the same thing in seven places. <laughs> so, may God, may God open our understanding. So, if the first time you heard it, you didn't understand. So, by the time you are listening to it the sixth time, seventh time, you will understand with the Holy Spirit. So, may God take charge of this one too. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Oh, God, I was so tired. I'm not even going to lie. But my coming for this podcast is the strength of God that brought me. That strength, that power that you promised the the disciples to go and wait for at the upper room. That's the thing that has brought me for this podcast. You say your strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. So it's no longer my strength. I cannot even glory in my strength. Now it's your strength that I'm using. I want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for when since that we started from the first one today, as everything has been moving, I return all the glory to you, O Lord. Please be magnified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, the word of God has been running. It has been coming out. It has been going out to do what you have sent it out to do. Thank you, Lord, as it's cleaning outside of the cup. It's also cleaning inside of the cup, too. You are not making me to be left out of this word of God. The two-edged sword that is going out, doing the work of God, is also working in my life too. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name for this. Father, be magnified. Father, this is another topic that is deep, that we cannot do it with our power, that we need you again. Almighty oh, Father, please refill me and refill me with the Holy Spirit. Father, please fill me up with your power. King of glory, please fill me up with your spirit. Jesus, please don't let me be of my own. I want to be of your spirit. I want to be filled with your spirit. King of glory, please have your way. Father, Lord, please fill me with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. King of glory, please have your way as we will be learning from you again. The sixth podcast for today. Before we do the seventh, I know you will give me the strength. Or maybe to say that the strength of God will do it by himself. He will use me for your glory. Father, Lord, please take control. Father, let the word of God that will come out today. Don't let it be my word. Let it be your word, please. King of glory, let it let it uh, break the, the chains of darkness in the heart of everyone. Let it pull down every stronghold of darkness. Anything that is trying to raise itself against the standard of God. Let them be pulled down by this word of God that is going out now in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, please have your way. King of glory, please take control. Please take charge. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, please fill me up. At the end of this podcast, let the glory of God be, be praised. Let the name of God be praised. Be praised. Please God, take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I was trying to get myself without prayer, but I see that I just have to leave everything to God. You understand? I was trying to like get to that point where um I can feel my body, but I'm not feeling it yet. <laughs> so I'm leaving it all for God that God take control. I'm tired, but I need your strength. So this one is uh unfruitful work of darkness. So we got it also from the Bible. It's not, it's not our own word. It's, our, it's the word of God. So let's go to where it is in the Bible. Then we pray that when we read it, the Lord will speak through us. We speak through me. I will speak to us what we want us to learn from there in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah. Uh, I'm looking at the verses new. Maybe I should read more than that, verse 14. 
14 wait 11 we start from 11 i'm thinking maybe we should read from from verse 1 but let's go first of all read that uh, uh, because i'm looking at the verses as i'm reading from verse 1 i'm seeing that all of them are good verses <laughs> When I mean good verses, like they are, they are supporting our our points. So we might still read them. Okay, let's start from that verse one. We will stop in verse uh, twenty one. Ephesians chapter five, verse one to twenty one. Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also had loved us, and had given Himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God, for a sweet smelly savour, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no warmonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. 11, which where our topic is taken from. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Hmm, you see that? 12, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. You see, it's almost like the last podcast, but it will be like continuation, you understand. For whatsoever does make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. 15. See then that he walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So we have picked the one we want to use. Start verse 11. But it's good when we read the Bible like this. It gives us power. There's power in the word of God. So let's explain. He said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So we want to talk about the unfruitful work of darkness. What are the unfruitful work of darkness? You see, in that place, he said, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. So what is this saying? He's trying to say that all this uncleanness, all this fornication, all this covetousness, all this sinful things, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Then it went for, it went further in verse 5, he said, for this ye know, that no warmonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. You understand? So what is he saying? He's saying that all these sinful things, they are the unfruitful works of darkness. I think this passage of the Bible is addressing Christians. And of course it's true. Because the teachings of Paul the Apostle, or let me say the, the 
letters of all the apostles. They were written to the churches, like this Ephesians now. These are churches, this this is a particular church that uh, uh, Paul the Apostle has preached there before. So he now sent message to them through his letters. You understand? So he, 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 they were actually Christians. So he was telling them that all these things should not be heard of in the church. Don't be a sinning Christian. You understand? He said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather reprove them. You understand? So the unfruitful works of darkness, what is it even trying to say? It's trying to say that all the works of darkness that you are seeing around you, they are not fruitful. Is it the person that is always carrying one girl? One mongers, you see that place that he talks about, one mongers. Those of you that you are carrying, Olosho. That's why no matter how much you go about insulting these girls, you are worse than them. I'm telling you today. You are more evil than them. You are more foolish than them. You see, even God, even Paul the Apostle talked about foolish things there. He said, neither fool, filthiness, no foolish talkings, no jesting, which are not convenient. You understand? He's saying that you are foolish. You are carrying one among us. You are sleeping with this solo show, but then you go on the internet and you say every girl is a solo show now. You, 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 you are more stupid than that girl in itself. Because if that girl finds a good guy, he will not even come to your side at all. So that is to say that you are, not, you are even the worst more than that girl. But you are trying to make everybody look at the girl like she's the most foolish. She's the most evil. Why you you are respected? No, you are not respected. You are worse. You have discussed it in that lesson that we did, men's sexuality and men's authority. We discussed it when we used the example of Judah, that he slept with his son's wife, and he wanted to tell this way that they should come and stone the woman. And the woman, the woman made it clear that you are the one that slept with me. And then he said, oh, he, he, he is worse than the girl. And I said, that is the same judgment God is giving to every man today. You sleep with a, with a girl, but then you want the girl to look like the most uh, devilish. Or you want the girl to carry all the blame of the both of you. You are the worst than the girl. Because God expects you to do better. You have discussed all these things. If I be following our podcast from the beginning, you will see that we have discussed many of these things. One of the things we discussed was what was God expecting from Adam. God was expecting from Adam that he should be the one to do the right things. He should be the one to be like, no, my wife, we will, we will love the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will not obey this God. I have been in this, in this garden for years and the Lord has not failed me. I can't fail him now. Just one example. He should be the one to tell the woman, the Lord has given us as many fruits as possible in this garden. Let's wait for him and ask, I tell him what the snake said. Let's ask him first before we do it. Don't do it. He should be the one to do that. That is how to be a man. That is what God was expecting from Adam. But he failed it. So what am I trying to say there is that all these warmongers and everything like that, they are foolishness. They are the unfruitful works of darkness. God is saying all these things that you are doing, they are unfruitful. There are fruitful works of darkness. They are darkness. They keep you in the darkness. What God is saying, again, God is saying through the the epistle of, of Paul the Apostle, that rather reprove them. He said, light reveals, but darkness hides. And what does it mean? By the time you are feeling comfortable with what they are doing, you are telling them, ah, babake, no problem. You don't you don't sleep with the girl, so just like what one boy wanted me to do one time like that. I stood my ground. I didn't allow it. <laughs> me and I took a girl to his house, you know. I was cleaning house. I was cleaning his house, you understand? Not even his house, his friend's house. And then he got there and saw this girl. And immediately he was like, give me this girl now. Uh-uh. What sort of English is that one? Do I look like... Um, and what do they call these people that give out people for for sex? I'm not like that. This girl has a relationship. I stood my ground. Even the girl was already wanting to do things like that. But I stood my ground. I don't know if they slept with each other behind my back. But there they would know that I was against it. 
And she went and got another boyfriend by herself. But not that particular guy. I stood my ground. I will not be a part of this. You understand? These are the things that God wants. You are saying that you don't you don't fornicate with girls, but you are planning how a boy and a girl will fornicate together. You are giving out your friend to another boy to go and sleep with her, with her. You know you, you are not you are not uh revealing the dark like that. You are already having fellowship with the fruitful works of darkness by that. You understand? The Bible says reprove them. Let your light, let it shine. He said the light reviews. Where did they even write that in that verse 11? Verse 11 says, And I have no fellowship with the fruitful works of darkness. Then verse 12 now says, For it is shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. He said that it is a shame. By the time you are you are the one that is that is planning secret how to destroy another person in secret. He said it's a shame. You should you should let your light shine. But he said, But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. But whatsoever does make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You understand? You see it? You see it? He's saying that by the time you shine your light, maybe they say, eh, Come and sleep with me. I always use these examples because they are the ones common around me. You understand? I say, hey, Come and sleep with me. That is the time you should shine your light. Jesus Christ said, You are the light of the world. At that particular time, you should be shining your light out. You should shine it out. Let people see your light. Don't hide it. Don't say, ah, if I do it now, what will happen? Like some some guys now, now they, they will be married. They will have marriage in the house. And they will go and toast my guy. Say, I have marriage though. I am married though, but I want you to be my side chick. A secret lover. Don't do it. Don't let any man treat you like that. That is selfish on the guy's part. Because number one, you are breaking two people's heart. You are making this girl less of who she's supposed to be. Did they say that she too, she cannot be the main wife in another man's life? Why are you treating a woman like that? That is so unfair. You want to have a secret relationship with her. What God is saying is that when they're asking you to do a secret relationship like that, they say, I have no fellowship with it. They are unfruitful works of darkness. Don't have fellowship with it because that relationship will not even lead anywhere, first of all. No matter how you try to do it, it's not going to lead you anywhere. Eventually, this man will have sense. Many time, that's why I'm so confused about men. <laughs> you know, I was I watched the movie one time and I'm like, God, what was all this? The boy, after he has made this girl to to abort pregnancy several times while they were young, and her womb got destroyed. So when they now got uh, older and they met again, the boy was not apologizing. He was not saying I, I was, that I was foolish then. And I'm not like, what will you... Are you trying to say that anytime I see a man like this, I should assume that he's a foolish man or what? You know, I was not like... Ah. You will come and now come and apologize by saying that you are foolish. But if somebody calls you foolish, you will, you will insult the person. You will be angry that why are they calling you foolish? But then when you want to come and apologize for your bad behavior, you will tell them that you are foolish. So let's Kukuma believe that you are foolish in the beginning now and then just stay away from you. You know, it was so painful. Oh my God, I watched that part as many times as possible because the woman that acted is really acted it with emotions. In fact, even me, I felt I felt the emotion in my spirit that was this. Ah, the man was apologizing that he was foolish at that time. That please don't destroy this marriage that I want to do. Like, and I'm not like, did they send men to women to just come and frustrate a woman's life? Like, you just frustrate a woman's life. You just start living. Because you are not serious, you don't know what you want. You just start jumping from one woman to another, breaking their heart, destroying their life. And when they accuse you of what you have done, you say hey, you were foolish at that time. <coughs> you know, I, it became something on my mind that was really troubling me. And I'm like, God, I don't know how to deal with men. I don't know how to to handle men. Let me just be on my own and develop my life. So I use all those energy I'm supposed to be using to learn 
how to live with man, or how to understand me. I, I diverted all those energy on my life. But a lot of pastors will say, pray for marriage. I say, please, allow me to make it in life first, please. When you are talking about man, my life is more important. Man will frustrate you and then they will make you look stupid for feeling frustrated. But it's then that caused it. I'm telling you, if you see anything that is happening to any woman, go and check it. It's coming from a man. It's coming from a man. There's another, there's another story of a woman. <laughs> For 18 years, this man left him. Now she has fibroids, she's sick, and she didn't get married to another man. But this man left him for 18 years, he went abroad. He just said he's going somewhere. He just left this woman, went abroad with another woman. I think now he wants to come back home. And he wants this woman to be his wife. And I'm like, what kind of? What kind of life is this? The man, I think the woman has more than five blood. Now, maybe hypertensive or diabetes or something. But, like, she's now sick due to everything that has happened to her. She has not even remarried to another man since that time. Like, what do you mean? How do you mean make women f- feel bad like this? Like, ah, God, please, I don't want a man that will make me less of myself. God, please. I also want that we always push me higher. I always make me feel good with myself. God, please, send all these demonic men away from me. What God is saying that by the time you are doing all these things, you are doing, you are walking with darkness. You are dark. You are, you are evil. You are a devil. That's the meaning. For God is advising Christians, you have no fellowship with your fruitful work of darkness. God is trying to tell you that all these things that are unfruitful, they will not lead you anywhere. Because it will not lead you anywhere. You are always treating ladies badly. It will not lead you anywhere. It is very, very unfruitful. It is unfruitful. You see, it is Solomon that tried all of them together and told us at the end of his life. He said, eh, This is the con- conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. He said everything is vanity. He said he gave his eyes everything that his eyes wanted. But they are vanity upon vanity. You understand? So what is he trying to say? He's trying to tell us that there are unfruitful works of darkness. All these sinful things. If you are calling yourself a child of God and then you are still going in the secret to do one thing or the other that is against God, you are still going to Babalawo, you are still looking for money by all means. Some, do you know that some people in the church today that are the most respected in the church that people are respecting and saying ah baba really baba okay. even young boys they go and do all those rituals so that they can be favorites of the pastors they go in the secret to go and do rituals so that they can have money and spend on girls and spend on their pastor and have the favor of their pastor jesus is telling us from this bible so they have no fellowship with those unfruitful works of that. They don't have fruit. They will not lead you anywhere. Of what gain do you do you get in, in just a pastor saying, Oh, you are right before God? And God says, I, I recognize you not. I know you not. So what is your gain? What is your gain? It means that the same thing that is happening to, to the worldly people that are not even saved. Maybe they don't sleep at night. Maybe they too, they have to sleep on bed at ground at night. You know? The same thing is happening to you. Some people, they even eat food sacrifice. They even eat foods. They eat food on, on burial grounds. Just to keep their money. And now you, you are, you are a child of God. And then because you are still doing something with the unfruitful work of darkness. You see yourself again that you are, you are, doing, you are, you are doing those kind of things. You understand? And you are still the type that you cannot sleep at night. You cannot feel comfortable. The Holy Spirit is not there to comfort you. So what is the fruitful works that you have you have gained for yourself now? You see that it's unfruitful. It's unfruitful now because eventually after you have suffered and suffered and put yourself in bondage, in bondage, you will still lose everything. You will still now go and lose your soul in hell. So what is the essence? What will be the type that will go and steal somebody's money? So that when they say come and donate money in the church, your own money is the highest in the church. Don't be like that. Don't go to those type of churches. 
that they will be praying for you so that you can dupe somebody of their hard earned money. No one goes to those type of churches, so. And the pastor will, will be, be praying for you so that you can you can steal like enough money as possible. Don't be that type of 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 person. No. That is unfruitful works of darkness. Go to that church that they will reprove sin in your life. That they will say, no, this is sin. He's also talking to pastors too. Don't have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. All those your members that you know that their job is not clean. Don't say God bless you with your sin. Let them know that this thing they are doing is, is going is taking them to hell. God is angry about it. Don't be the type of pastor that are just preaching free books. That are just making people to be comfortable in their sin. God said, tell the wicked it shall not be well with him. So why would you go to the altar and say, God bless you? When God said, it will not be well with the sinners. Are you not seeing that you are lying? Are you not seeing that you are a liar like that? Don't be like that. Don't lie to the church. Don't lie to your to your people. That's why they, are, they call you a shepherd. You have to watch over their souls. And God will ask you. He says, to whom much is given, much is expected. The Lord will ask you. The punishment of a pastor is different from the punishment of the church. Or let me say, what God we use to judge the pastor is different from what God we use to judge the church member. Because for the pastor, more is required. To whom much is given, much is required. They will ask you, did you take care of the souls of these people? Or do you, when they say shepherd, do you think he's, he's just leading them physically? No, it's also their soul too, their spirit. Are you leading these people towards God? Don't have fellowship with the unfruitful works of that. Just because they will bring money to church, then you close your mouth to all their sinful things. You are saying, God bless you. God bless you. Just because they, 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 you don't want them to run away from the church. Let them run, no. If they want to run, let them run. And I'm trying to tell you that people actually have a time that they want to come back to God. Everybody has that time. There's this song, I have returned to the Yahweh of Judah. To the, to, I have returned to the, to the God of my fathers. You understand? That song is like a, a child that has gone astray, that was thinking the worldliness is the best. He got to a time, he turned back, he remembered the God of his father. There are a lot of testimonies in the magazine of my of my church, of my childhood church. The children would just they would have been enjoying life on the sea and and they would be in the trouble at a particular time. They would say, God, if you can just save me, I would serve you. I will give my life to you. And that would be the turnaround. That they will start doing the things of God. So what is he trying to say? <laughs> He's saying that. It's not everybody that wants to hear God bless you with your sins. Some people really want to hear the word of God. Continue to preach it. One day they will come to die your church. Some people might even be at the brink of, of going to hell. Like some people may even be at the brink of almost losing their life. You understand? And then they get they come to your church at that time. They hear the word of God. And that is what will just save them. And they will get to heaven. They will no longer go to hell again. Because sometimes... I'm telling you, sometimes some people have really gone too far. Oh, really? I'm telling you. You know, God forgive me for saying all this. There were some people that I met like that in my life. And I really wish they could be alive after they were saved. But God decided to take them away. You understand? What is he trying to say? That some people have gone have gone too far beyond um, even staying alive. Remember that movie, that Christian movie, the Just a Little Sin? They have already taken her womb. She was going to die. They have already taken her soul. And you know, she was going to die. So that one, she was saved. But then, she couldn't live on that again. She had to go. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness. Don't say... Um, because of money. God said, we have learned this in our in our book. He said, seek it for the kingdom of God. Then all these things shall be added unto you. By the time you are doing what God has given you, then wait on him to bless you. He will not put you to shame. I'm telling you, it's my, it's my personal experience. 
Before I started doing prayers consecutively, my life was in depression. But by the time I started doing the prayers, things started changing. I stopped being depressed. I started seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Before, it was all dark in the tunnel. But later, I started seeing the light that, that they said is at the end of the tunnel. You understand? So may God help us. We have to come for the last podcast for today. I thank God for renewing my strength. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. You have heard your word again. About we should reprove the official work of darkness. We should not get comfortable with it. We should not make people feel comfortable with that thing. We should not join them to do secret things underneath. Father, we have heard so much. Please help us. Eternal Rock of Ages, please teach us. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Guide us. In the name of Jesus. Father, please. I am praying, please God, send men that know, that have the fear of God and that are real men. There are some men that just want to act like babies. I don't want those kind of men in my life. Father, Lord, we send good men that are, that are really, really men, that are really, really responsible and can be real men. Please, Lord, send them to me so that I can marry right. And this ministry can continue if to, even after marriage. I will not marry the type of man that will be so selfish about his own. Father, about his life, I doesn't care about his wife. Please, I don't want that kind of man in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for answering these prayers. Father, please refill me. I thank you so much. When I started this uh, particular podcast, I was so tired, but now you have restrained me, and I can come for the seventh one. Please, Lord, refill me again. Thank you for answering prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The word of God has gone now. Let it do what you are sending it out to do. Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.